Hey there, it's Brooks with Seven Sons and Grace Car, and in this episode, we're going to share three tips to grow and scale new pickup locations in new markets. If you've been on the lookout for distribution strategies you can use to service more customers than just where you are regionally located, uh, curbside pickup is going to be one of the easiest ways to get started. Uh, at the height of our curbside program at Seven Suns, we were servicing over 50 locations in places like Detroit, Chicago, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and it was super simple. People just placed pre-orders on our website. We met them at a central location at a central time. So the truck left full, paid for, and we could come back uh, all in the same day. And through that experience, we were able to find strategies to be able to reliably uh, pick the best locations, uh, find the best uh, next cities to deliver to, and make sure we had strategies to build enough awareness that we could acquire enough customers to make that trip worth our time. Uh, so to dig into this a little more and share about that experience, I'm joined with my brother Blaine, CEO of Seven Sons, as always. And if you're new to the show, wherever you're listening or watching this, be sure to subscribe because we drop an episode like this every other week. You're listening to Grace Cast, a show that shares the secrets to selling perishable food products online. The show and advice is brought to you by the team at Seven Sons, which is an eight-figure e-commerce business that started completely from scratch. Each episode, we bring you one topic, three strategies, and one tangible resource to continue your learning and put you on the fast track in your own e-commerce journey. Let's begin. All right, Blaine. So I know we're going to share some action items and tips for scaling a curbside pickup enterprise. But before we dive uh, deep into that, um, I wanted to quickly address the listener who might be thinking right now, um, hey, is, is buying clubs and... Uh, you know, remote pickup locations, is that kind of a thing of the past with the growth that we've been seeing with convenience, how consumers are wanting product delivered directly to their home? You see more and more people starting shipping enterprises and all that's just been accelerated with what's yeah. happened with the coronavirus and COVID-19. So what would you say to that person who thinks that is worried or concerned that is this really worth my time? Um, should I just go straight to home delivery, skip the whole curbside pickup option, yep. focus straight on that? Yep. Um, what would you say to that person? Well, first of all, curbside is very much alive. We've heard insights from Kroger that it's exploded for them. And yep. we've talked to other clients that are doing both shipping and home delivery. During the uh, coronavirus pandemic, kind of that height of that, that last year, everyone saw home delivery really, really thrive. But then, you know, come June and July, a lot of including seven sons saw home delivery kind of, you know, it, it definitely went back down, not yep. to where it was at all. Um, but we talked to farms that were offering, still offering curbside because we consolidated everything to home delivery because we, we, there's enough advantages for us to reduce the complexity of multiple sales channels at, at our scale. And we have a, a enough of a referral marketing engine that we don't need some of the advantages that that yep. curbside gave us early on for customer acquisition. So, so, so those farms that are still doing curbside, they did not see a, a reduction in sales. I mean, it, it, it was yeah, not near the reduction. The people that we've talked to who've had strong curbside pickup buying yeah. club businesses, uh, they're stronger than ever before. But it makes sense. You're able to offer a little better value because the logistics cost and the packaging cost, insulation, yep. you don't have to account for that. So it is, you can offer bigger bulk deals. Because with the curbside location, we always say this, with the curbside, the goal is fill the truck, mm -hmm. right? And so you can you can really leverage some efficiencies there where with shipping, it's fill the box. That's, yep. the, that's the scale metric you're trying so to do. So I wanted to address this because yes, we have closed our curbside pickup program. And yep. again, we were just at the scale where making that decision, we could shed so much complexity to focus just on home delivery and shipping. We've hit some economies of scale there. So there's not as much opportunity yes, for us to create the, point. the value for yes. curbside pickup. But when you're starting out, that value can be created very, very easily. When you talk about, you know, you need an insulated box for home delivery, your dry ice costs, your freight costs, and all of that when you're starting from scratch starts out at the highest price. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it because oh, yeah, right. you need to, you do need to get into that. And the only way to start is to start. Yep. Um, but you, that just does mean though, that you can offer true value to your customers by scaling a curbside pickup program, by doing things right, which we're going to share, you know, some tips and lessons that we've learned um, when it comes to that. And the key is to make sure that you 
communicate that value savings that you're uh, creating for your customers because yes. you need yes. you need them to know why why would I ever take time out of my day to come pick up this order when you yeah know, people can here's have what's in it for home. you to do, to use our curbside service you get you get you know this much savings whatever so but the, here's the other thing for if you're starting off I mean let's let's uh, curbside you know when we look at the past 20 years when we start when we went from farmers markets to the on-farm store and then we launched curbside uh, pickup locations or buying clubs that exploded our business it put legs on our business yep. and so that was a critical move for us but at, at, when you're getting started uh, curbside has some unique advantages for customer acquisition mm -hmm. uh, if you're strategic about it for example you can partner with wellness centers chiropractic offices and you know partner with them for a pickup location and you know hit, hit your you know, your, your yeah. business to their existing customer base and give them an incentive to email their customers and say, Hey, we're this farm delivers here every six weeks or every two weeks. Uh, we encourage you to check them out. You, you as a referral marketing engine that can be powerful or even if it's not a business, but you find one of those customers is just champion your farm. Uh, we have a couple of, we had a couple of curbside pickup locations where they were the most popular pickup locations because that person yep. was putting brochures in yep. every single office and chiropractor in the area. When you find the customer evangelist, uh, yeah. they can do great things for your business. Yes. Um, especially yes. when you reward that, that behavior. And even on the digital marketing side, when you have actual physical pickup locations, you know, we had what, almost 50. We got up to 50 at 50 one point. At one, yep, one at point. I mean, there's a lot of, we've talked about in these episodes before on the podcast, we've talked about, uh, link building. Well, there's mm -hmm. a lot of local food directories where you can put a listing out there for every single one of your pickup locations. Yep. And so that becomes a powerful uh, acquisition, uh, you know, uh, machine when you're, when you're starting off, it, it, you've really noticed that and I, we did. I think that what's important here too, is that, uh, you know, so, you know, people who have buying club businesses, they've been doing better than ever before, but yes. Uh, we could see that continue to grow. It's 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 hard to say where this is all going to go because what? in a volatile market and uncertain times, people are going to appreciate value more than ever before. And I think that's part of the reason why we were seeing the um, you know those folks who were doing curbside pickup were not seeing the fall off that we were with home delivery. Yes, and we and we still do curbside pickup at the farm for sure, yep. Brooks. And we've we've considered so many advantages to to launching. Uh, curbside again, but we're trying to flex our focus muscle. Yeah, well. this has been an internal debate, and we definitely do have ideas. Um, I think my guess is that sometime in the future we'll be back in the uh, curbside pickup business, but it'll probably look a little bit different than what it looked like before. Yep. Trying to leverage more value for the customer, which again is the benefit of curbside pickup in the first place. So, yep, yep. So, what what are the you're going to share with us some real? Yep, stuff. I've written down, made some notes. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive into kind of the three most important tips and lessons learned through our experience for scaling curbside pickup. And the first one is all about the location. And I really feel like yes. this this may be the most important part and it's the, the most common mistake that we see people make when starting curbside pickup and and making deliveries outside of, you know, their their local city or their local market. Mm -hmm. uh, the big thing with location, you talked about a few things, trying to find some synergistic partnerships. But what's even more important is just looking at What's the population density I can get to in a single day to make a one route with a delivery vehicle? So be out on the road for yeah. you know, 12, 14 hours, be a long day. Yeah. But how do I maximize the number of people that could potentially have access to these pickup locations? Right. So that means looking at a map, take, take some time to do this. It's all about planning. Look at a map and see in a day's drive, what are the largest markets that you can get to? So the common mistake that we see people making is they're typically looking at what's the closest market I can get to that's, yeah. you know, kind of a, you know, a decent size. Yeah. Um, but that again, the population density is the biggest factor here. We talk about uh, uh, it on the shipping side yeah. as well. Yep. Um, you know, just looking at the number of people that you can potentially have access to, that's going to make the biggest difference when it comes to the success of these new pickup locations. Because I know we've all, and we've done this too starting off, but and, and I've looked at farms that are using Grace Cart, and I see their pickup location map, and I see, 
you know, pick up locations at a city of 10,000, yeah, 20,000 no. people, 30,000 people here and there. But if you look at if they just expanded their radius by another hour of driving, they can hit these major cities of a million people or 500,000 mm-hmm. people. Just add an hour to the route. Yeah, it's like yep. skip those. Yep. You know, you can add those later, but those are those are better drops to add later. You need to you need to fill that truck and leverage your time, especially if you're starting up, leveraging your time is one of the most important things you can do. Yep, and this is this is even more important the more niche of a product that you have yeah. um yeah so you know and that's the thing you know if we're selling pasture raised meats grass-fed beef um those are still when you look at you know consumer trends and what people are buying those are still niche products so you got to get to a large population in order to find enough people to fill the truck who are and, interested and in the those demographics items. do change in the five hundred thousand to a million population yes. metropolitan areas it, it just starts to work at that point so. yep so the big thing here is to you know as far as practical tips for what can this look like you know, we tell people in the early days, you know, don't worry about who that pickup location host is. So, cause I think a lot of times people choose cities that are closest to them because they might have a connection there or a relative who lives there and they yeah. can easily start a pickup location there. So yeah. forget about that in the early days. Yep. Um, in fact, uh, when we launched some of our first pickup locations, we just would pick an address on the map, a public parking lot that we knew that, hey, we're starting out small and if we only get five customers who show up, it's not gonna cause a big deal to be in the you know Menards parking lot or what yeah. have you to yeah. meet a few customers in a 15 minute time window yeah. and we'd be on our way. So uh, you know, find something that can be a public uh, parking place to put your stake in the ground and say, okay, I'm delivering to this location on this date. Um, and then once you have those first few customers who come, uh, then you're recruiting them. Usually, there's one uh, one out of those first five will say, "Sure, I'll you the, can host it at my you know yeah. at my cul-de-sac." And the my... people who who uh, support you in the early days, anyways, those are the people who are obviously going to the most work to even find you. So they're going to yeah. be probably the most loyal and the most committed and yeah. the most open to something like this instead. So. Yeah recruit those folks, then you can find that location in the demographic and the the cities that really are going to give you your return. And we find it over time. Once you're established in an area, um, you know, a lot of times as clubs have grown, Brooks, we've split off clubs because they yep. just got too big. And so when we split off, that was a great opportunity to find that right uh, uh, a club leader that maybe was a part of a, a you know, whatever, a car practice office or a, um, a yep. gym or something that they, where yep. they have a customer base they can promote us to. So I think the perfect route, if I'm starting out from scratch, um, the example I think of is um, our route that we used to have to Ohio, yeah. because this is yes. an example of a route yes. where we hit several major markets in a day's drive. So instead of just going to one market and one major city and making three stops there and then returning home, we were actually saying, hey, do we have time to just make one drop in that city, continue on, hit another major city? Yes. So the example of this route that we had is the route started out leaving our farm and going to Columbus, Ohio. 800,000 million yep. people. Great market in our area. Made one stop there, and then we headed on down to Dayton, Ohio. That's 250,000 people in Dayton. Yep. Yeah. On our way to Cincinnati, which was the main market we were trying to get to, yes. and we made two stops in Cincinnati, then the truck headed back home. How long was that route? What was it? Close to, it was a long day. It was, it could, some days it could be a 16 hour day. Yep. It was long for the driver, but it worked. The truck was always full, and we, we hit the market. It was the, and it was the best way to fill the truck as quickly as possible when we were starting out from scratch. Just yes. think about the opportunity you have. Because we were tempted those. in Ohio to hit these smaller uh, cities. Yeah, and around, around Columbus. Because look, yeah. again, you were just thinking that one market with 250, then, it, then all of a sudden we added on so many more yeah. major markets onto that route. So look at, just look at the map. Yep. What's in a, what's in a 250 mile radius? What's in, you know, can you achieve in a day's drive? Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, Put your stake in the ground in those markets, and that sometimes turns out to be the perfect route. And it can be great for a link building because you're. I mean, let's face it. I mean, if there's people, if there's a city with a million people and they're they're searching grass fed beef, and Eat Wild comes up, for example, and you have a buying couple location listed there, the amount of traffic is going to drive to your website just because yep. you chose a location in a high. Uh, population area yeah. so, so right. i actually knocked out the two tips here back to back so number one is to look at the market yeah. so the location look yep. at population density focus there number two is to start with those temporary pickup locations so yeah. mm-hmm. make sure you're just finding a public parking place don't worry about making sure that you have someone who's going to host the location because you can recruit those little customers um you know once you get that first handful of customers and sometimes too if you promote 
far enough in advance, which is going to be tip number three, we recommend promoting your new pickup locations at least 12 months in advance. Absolutely. Because yep. if you have that time period, you can build awareness around, hey, I'm hitting this, I'm going to be delivering to this market so, 12 months down the road. And if you're growing an email list, you have social media pages, you can if, continue to build awareness. Here's, here's the that. problem. You think about, oh, okay, I, you know, the city of Houston, for example, is three hours from me. I don't know a single person there. I don't have a single customer there. And it's like, so how do you make that leap to commit to that driving that far you know yep. the fear is i'm only gonna, gonna have five orders or one order um and 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 that's your fear so how do you get over that if you start promoting it for example when we when we launched into chicago brooks that was yep. the same scenario we had we didn't know anyone there uh we didn't have a market established but we put on the website hey well actually the first thing we did brooks is we went to google analytics okay mm -hmm. and we looked at their geographic chart and we looked at Chicago, and we could see the metro areas within Chicago where we were getting the most traffic to our website. Yeah, people already. were already going to the website from yes, those areas. Exactly. Yep. So we we used that to target. Okay, we're going to start our first our first pickup location in Naperville. Uh, Frankfurt was another one. These are metro areas around Chicago and Libertyville. So we just yep. basically said on the website, "Hey, next spring." We're coming to these three locations on this date. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a single club leader to host a location. We just said, we're coming to these cities, yep. and we started building links around them. We started promoting in the newsletter. It was on the homepage, coming to Chicago. You know, I think it was spring 2010. I think our Mar our first delivery was in March that year. And Brooks, we promoted ahead of time. And the, the call to action was, if you want to be the first to know when these clubs go live, uh, sign up on the email list. And we actually mm -hmm. had a contest. You could win like a $500 prize drawing um, yep. from all those email yep. lists. So day one, when March came around, we had a full truck and it was, it was full for 10 years afterwards until we, we closed the buying clubs and consolidated yep. shipping. And again, this is so important because your hesitation might be, well, this market's three hours away. I don't have any word of mouth, no customers there. That's growing for me. And uh, how am I ever going to make this trip <laughs> worthwhile? And that's the reason why it's true. You don't have word of mouth synergy growing for you. So yeah. that's why you need to promote it 12 months in advance. You run that newsletter every single week and you're getting those folks when you are promoting it to sign up on that newsletter. You're building a relationship with them. And, you know, like you mentioned too, offer some sort of incentive to be the first customer in these areas. Um, so whether it's a, a discount, a free item, whatever it is, just offer some sort of exclusive benefit for being that first customer and that's how you fill the track and committing to new pickup locations is just it's more about getting out of your own head i, I always thought about it uh that fear of starting a new pickup location committing to that first delivery in a in a faraway city you gotta remind yourself what's the worst thing that could happen zero orders come in yeah. or even okay what if five orders came in and, you, and in your mind you're like i just can't commit to doing that well, call those five customers and tell them I'm going to put it in a UPS shipping box. I'll call cover the extra cost or just call them and say, hey, listen, we don't have enough deliveries just yet. Tell your friends and we'll schedule one to a month or two months from yeah. now when you gather up. Postpone uh, it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not like, a big deal. You know deal. what, guys, we're going to wait a little bit longer. And yeah, that puts a little incentive out there. Maybe start a referral program. Hey, yeah. you know, we didn't have enough customers now. Uh, we're going to postpone this for three months. Uh, tell your friends. And if you do, we're going to give you, a, yep. you know, an additional $5 credit on that order. But the key is time. It really does help if you if you use, if you spend That's 12 months factor. doing it, yep. it is time. And because um, I know later on, Brooks, as we were launching new pickup locations, sometimes we'd only pre-market them eight weeks in advance. Yep. And some of those did start off with two, three, and five orders. And in that, But in that case, we had a shipping program going at the same time. It was nothing for us just to say, hey, we won't be making a physical delivery. Those five customers will get it delivered to their home. And they're like, cool. They don't, yep. you know, it's better for them even. Plus when you Anyways. start out and once you start to get a route established, you can add a new location onto that route. And you're kind of subsidizing maybe going there because you already have a truck full from another pickup location that yes. you have a lot of customers at. So that's a good point. But especially in the beginning, that time is the X factor because anything new you start is going to be a slow grow. It starts yep. out as a tiny little snowball. You got to roll it down the hill. Yep. And the biggest difference, you know, once it gets down the hill, it's this, you know, it's this gigantic snowball. But the biggest difference was that time that it took to get there. And if you remember, I don't know if you remember, Brooks, but when we did start our first routes, we were only dropping at each location three times per year. So that gave us a lot of time in between the drops to gather up a lot of orders. I don't really recommend that because grass fed beef is more highly available and products like we sell there's a lot of places people can go get it so that worked for us 
Um, you know, maybe if you're someone who's still kind of in that freezer beef business stage where buying your leaders. customers are stocking up anyways, yeah, it might make a little bit more sense for that. But it really depends. What's your end goal? What are you trying? What kind of business are you trying to build? Yep, exactly. Um, and I wanted to double down on the link building promotion strategy that you were talking about earlier as well. So when yes. you start promoting these locations 12 months in advance, you have an address, you know where you're going to go to. You have that sales page built on your website. Now create listings on online food directories like Eat Wild, there's Local Harvest, realmilk.com if you do raw milk type products. There's many, many, many food directories out there, hundreds yes. of them, and there's a lot of local food directories as well. And you should already have your farm set up as a listing on those uh, directories. Um, but once you start those new pickup locations, a lot of them will let you create a separate listing for the pickup location as well. So what that does is it just it increases the exposure that you get on a lot of those directories. Cause a lot of the directories too, when someone goes there, they're trying to narrow down their search results for a certain area. So I want to see, okay, here, either my city and or most my likely state. Your farm isn't located in the middle of a million, million population city. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. So, but you can put your buying club listing there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So then that just expands that reach and exposure that you get on every single directory that's out. You there. know, referral traffic from link building Brooks was our number one source of traffic to our website, probably in our first five years of business. Yep. Yep. Now it's like, like less than 8% mm -hmm. just because of word of mouth. But when you're starting out, exposure. you need traffic, any yes. exposure that you can get. And this is a great, easy way. It's a high leverage way to do it because you do the work once, set up all the pickup locations on the directories. Yes. Then they're always on there. They're always pointing traffic back to your website. And we've talked about in other episodes, we've talked about the strategy before. It also helps out with SEO. So there's many reasons to take the time uh, to, to put the effort in to get those links out there and building value for you. Yep. So those are the three tips, you know, find, uh, you know, target locations with the highest population density, launch with temporary drop sites. Don't worry about having club leaders or someone to host a location to start out, promote 12 months in advance. Then to really get things scaling, these are just a few other tips we wanted to leave you guys with. Um, you know, once you have kind of those first routes and you want to continue to scale a curbside pickup business or a buying club business, there's really, you know, three things that you can do. You can now that you have a strategy and a plan in place, you can start uh, duplicating this and increasing the number of locations that you deliver to. So finding other markets, again, within that day's drive and, you know, just repeat this exact same framework. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Number two is to increase the amount of people that are, or the amount of uh, dollars that people are spending with you uh, when they place those orders and come to the pickup location. So there's a lot of different strategies for doing that. We've talked about some in the past. The biggest one is to increase your offering. So this is actually a big mistake that we see people make is they, you know, sometimes they'll follow this strategy here, but if you're only selling like one major category, so maybe it's grass fed beef or it's grass fed lamb, yeah. you're going to, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're going to really struggle to fill the truck yes. with a buying club business with just selling grass fed lamb. Yes. So the quickest way to fill the truck, a quickest way to increase your customer spend is just to increase the number of products that you offer to them. And it makes so much sense because with a buying club, uh, a customer is going to a certain amount of work to go travel to that curbside pickup location. It makes sense to them to have a good size order and to get as much variety as possible. Yeah. They get that. One, one thing that we truly really tried to do with our merchandising when we were only doing buying clubs, Brooks, was avoiding small uh, incentives for smaller bundles yep. because we knew that by the time the customer got done through the process of going to the pickup location on a specific day and time, they're going to feel much better if they're walking away with a great value in a, in, and a good amount of product versus, wow, all this for yeah, all my, this little, effort my for, little bag yeah. that I walk away with. You have to, we always wanted to avoid that. You have to really like grass-fed lamb or grass-fed bison to take that much time out of your day to just go home with, yeah. with a couple of yep. you know, with, yep. with a couple nights dinners. Yep. So the third way you can scale the, you know, the buying club business is to increase frequency. So how often people are placing orders with you. You want yeah. people coming back every single time that you make a delivery to those locations. Lots of strategies there as well. Uh, one of the biggest ones that we've talked about um, in the past as well is uh, your promotion strategy. Yeah. Uh, so how often are you giving your customers a reason to buy from you? More than just the fact that, oh, we're delivering to this location again. Yes. Um, so playing a putting a 12-month a promotional strategy together. And again, if you have multiple different product categories that you're offering, 
you know, focusing those promotions on different product categories throughout the year as they fit your uh, prom- uh, your uh, production cycle um, has been a really good fit for us. So just remember, you got to give your customers a reason to come back. And Brooks, let's not leave out the fact that our most profitable email we ever sent out was a automated email that was built into Gray's cart that simply knew that these customers are associated to this curbside location and Gray's cart automatically emails those customers and says, hey, you know, it's been, uh, you have until Saturday to place a curbside pickup order. If you miss this deadline, you'll have to wait six weeks until the next delivery. And that email, you know, it creates the urgency. It yep. creates a force. Someone has to make a decision at that point. Yes or no. It was the most profitable email we ever sent. And it was automated directly from Grace. Well, so that's the advantage of a Grace Cart it, it helps, it helps everybody too, because, you know, one of the things with running a curbside pickup program that it's a really small thing and an issue that comes up that just makes you want to pull your hair out is people forgetting to place their order. So yeah. your deadline's passed. You're trying to get yeah. everything fulfilled before the pickup and you have customers. Oh, I forgot to yes. get my order, please. And yeah. it's really hard to say no to that because you want the the revenue, but yep. then it causes all this work on the back end and inconvenience yep. for you. You want to take care of the customer. Yeah. So not only does this make it easier for the customer to remember to place their order on time, it's going to make it easier for you on the back end too, to help just the system run more smoothly. So, yep. Bottom line, Brooks, curbside is still alive, and it definitely has unique advantages uh, when you're starting up trying to get that initial awareness. And the pr- important thing is to just get started. One of my favorite quotes is by George uh, S. Patton that says, a good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week. Yeah. So the big thing here is to make the commitment, hit the pavement, get out on the road, because even if you start out and it starts out small, you're going to learn so much from that first delivery that you go out and make, and you're going to change things. And it's better to make those first mistakes with a smaller customer base than have to make those, you know, once you have scaled it to a point. So commit and make this happen. Awesome.